broadcasting from Hollywood, California. It's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. Vanderpump Rules drops a questionable season 8 trailer. Kanye is more delusional than ever. Granny June calls in to rant about the New Jersey Housewives premiere. And Constance Wu's sitcom joins this year's list of canceled shows. That and more with Jay Ellis right now. begin. I am joined by my good friend, Jay Ellis, actor and host. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy. It's been about, what, 100 episodes since my last time here? <laughs> oh, God. Well, Shady. My indi- my, in my individual episode, I guess, I've done a couple yes. panels here and there. Right. Well, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't left you out in the cold. <laughs> no, not at all. And, I mean, we see each other more often right. than just the podcast, right. so I'm happy that I'm able to jump on here and you know, get to chit chat with you and rant. Yeah. No, it's it's high time and I'm so glad. And we've had technical problems all day. So Jay has just been such an all star. Thank you for being here and doing this podcast and being patient. Thank you. Nothing nothing could stop me from doing this. hundred and forty one shows, no technical problems except for today. I'm still bitter, but hey, let's get going. <laughs> uh, yeah. Vanderpump Rules, uh season eight. This trailer dropped. First of all, before I even get into all the notes that I have, I want to say about this. This trailer consisted of nothing for me. I, can I even say, was this even a trailer or was this a, like a, a flash promo? I, I don't know what this was. Yeah, it felt almost more like a previously on or like it kind of retreaded a lot of footage that we've seen before. And right? it was a very quick teaser. Yeah, I mean, it was almost like just barely getting your palate wet. Like there wasn't anything like, oh, I can't wait to see this scene. Like, I don't know. There was nothing in there that held me. But yeah, I agree. I feel, but I know that the full trailer is going to be coming out soon because oh. we have the new season coming January 7th. So right. I believe that they have a longer trailer coming uh, before the actual uh, oh, season. I, I thought this was the trailer. Okay. Well, then that explains it. So this is like the trailer before the trailer, like the Britney Spears announcement before the announcement. <laughs> yeah. Basically, the cast just came up from an elevator, took some steps down the stairs, and then got into a car. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So okay, I hope people get that reference. Maybe I'm a little too soon on this, but um, I'm going to discuss it anyway. Um, yeah. But okay. Um, so basically, the, there's a new direction. There's uh, some new cast members, but yet the opening credits that they tacked on at the end, which I don't understand the reason for that either, only shows Brett, one of the new ones. So are these new people going to just kind of be like you know floating around in, in the periphery? Are they really cast members or what? So what I can guess is, and I mean, for me, this change comes a little too late. We're in eight seasons now, and now they're trying to get us involved in with a batch of new people is kind of strange. But I think I have a theory about why they did this. But as of right now, they added five new cast members. So Bo and Raquel, who we both know from previous seasons, have been added full time. Um, We have Brett, Charlie, Danica, Dana, and Max, who are going to be the new additions. So these are people that we saw in the trailer, but I don't know how integral they are into the core group of, like, the Vanderpump cast as we know them. Right. It's kind of like, in Housewives terms, like, who's a friend of? Like, who's popping in and out? And then who's actually driving story? Um, Good for Raquel for finally hustling for all these years and getting (laughs) that full-time check. (laughs) I would say she earned it. I mean, that poor girl has been made a fool so much on television that I'm so happy she got into the opening credits just for the (laughs) fact of her putting in the hard work and being called so many names. I'm like, get her in that Renaissance painting of an intro where they have everybody just standing around around Lisa Vanderpump. Oh, that's true, though. I mean, it's like, you know, you marry a man for money, you earn it like she, you know, she got with James to get on the show. She's earned it. She's earned it. Now, my cynical view, if I could share it with you about these new people coming in, is Stassi, Kristen, Katie, like all of them are no longer working at Sir. So I think it was a real big push from maybe Lisa and producers to say, look, we need people to be coming into Sir to see these people from the show. And if we don't have... I mean, I think Sheena is maybe the only original cast member who is still working shifts, minus like Peter. But I don't think many people are... yeah. And like no shade to Peter or Sheena, but I don't think that they've ever been the main draw of the show. 
Well, I think I want to echo what you said because it was so smart. They're, they're a little too late with this. I mean, they should have actively been like intri- integrating new faces throughout the run of the show as opposed to just concentrating so much on these people that really have kind of like no one's going to believe that they're slinging drinks. Like no one's going to believe it. So this should have been happened years ago. I agree. And to have um, – who is it? Like – Stasi, who hasn't even been at the restaurant for so long, Kristen, who hasn't either. It's like I'm thinking – so this isn't even about Sir anymore. It's just we're following these people's lives. And we've seen other characters come into the show like Laura Lee, um, Vale. They really Vail, tried to yeah. – do you remember? I mean that was such an obscure one. But there is somebody who stood <laughs> the test of time, and that's James and Lala. Those are the two that have come in and really made a name for themselves on the show and really became – I feel like Lala is one of the breakouts from the show. I agree. I really do. And I'm looking at these names. I looked up all the people to see what their kind of their claim to fame. I looked at all their Instagrams um, just to see kind of the background. And, you know, their lives are made. I mean, that's all you need to do now is to get on one of these shows, you know, like a bachelorette, even something like that. Then you get the blue check mark. Then you get the management. I mean, you know, all you really, even if they have a lousy season, their lives are made by just being cast, even if they're on three episodes. So I'm a little jealous, but all, I mean, I'm not trying to be on Vanderpump Rules, but, um, you know, I'm like, <laughs> good for them. I mean, this is a huge leg up in the world that we live in now, even if you are just, you know, in the background fighting with Sheena for a scene, because there's going to be one of them. One of them is supposed to go up against Sheena. And I think it's this, um, this Jaina. Okay. Because I hear that Dana and Max kind of start up something romantic and right. Sheena and Max have had something in the past. That's so I it. think that it's OK. I, I'm not sure if I'm getting it right, if it is Dana or maybe Danica. But um, there is history between Sheena and Max. And then something happens where uh, it starts off as a warning and then maybe turns into like a jealousy type thing. Right. That's what I think is going to play out. That's what I gathered. Uh, there's this guy, Brett Capriani. He's a server. He's a YouTuber from New York, apparently. He has over 200,000 followers on the Instagram. Um, have you heard of this guy? I mean, are you familiar with him as a YouTuber? No, I've, I've never heard of him. Yeah. Well, the, the, he'll bring a lot of eyeballs to the show from that space for sure. Because I know there was a lot of like, I just looked at the comments and on uh, of the after the promo, and they were all like going crazy for Brett. So, um, you know, smart on their behalf. Um, I'm gonna give um, Lisa Vanderpump slash editing some credit. Uh, the new Lisa walking towards the camera shot. She looks good. I will say she looks good. She looks great at the cost of I don't know if you've heard this. But at the cost of Lala, Kristen, and whoever, who's in that? Oh, Sheena. All three of them got their promo, their slow motion, like Lala blowing the rose petals. They got reused because Lisa took time away from the shooting schedule to shoot her own intro. Wait, And so they what? had to reuse. Oh, yeah. If you look at season seven, Kristen, I did, Lala. I, did, I noticed that, but I didn't realize that their their time was stolen. Uh, well, appara- this is according to Ariana, who tweeted this because I guess a lot of people were questioning why they had the same intro as last season. And she said, well, we had Lisa on set who shot hers. And since it's a rare thing for her to come in and do hers, a lot of time was dedicated to that. So I don't know why those oh, three specifically on. were regulated to like having their old promos used when, I mean, they clearly had time to do Stassi, Bo, you know, all these other people. Yeah. You know what? Okay. I take it back. I'm not giving her any credit. <laughs> I don't care I that she looks good in the shot. I don't. Yeah, I know. I don't care that she looks halfway decent in the shot. Walk touch the camera. That was ridiculous. This is an ensemble show. She's pulled the same stunts. This I can see right there. That is so selfish. This the show is not even about her. Please, I freaking had it with her. I don't ever get these stunts. Yeah. And, and my source is Ariana. I, I believe it was a tweet or an Instagram comment because I, I think people were asking, well, what happened there? Because it seems so cobbled together and maybe this isn't the final edit since this was like a teaser trailer but i'm guessing everything else looked pretty final so i'm thinking this is the the intro that we're going to get for the season i mean all you really need is a green screen call those girls in and just you know give them you know they're going to light the scene and then just 
give them a, what do they carry a, a tray i mean just give them a quick prop and i mean i yeah. could do it in my studio g apartment for christ's sake i mean you know I, i'm a big believer in opening titles so it's like extra you know for me like i think like you got to do it right um people notice like immediately people notice that stuff and so did i and I, I wondered why um it's like when a new season of housewives starts and they're using the same you know gallery images and the same opening titles it's kind of lazy it shows that there's a lack of investment there. And I, I yeah. expect, you know, I expect good marketing, good digital marketing. And, and not for nothing, but the Vanderpump Rules intro is one of the best ever. I think it has, it it really sells you the show and makes you intrigued by what's going on. Because I love watching the slow motion turns and it's just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, I can live though without Lisa Vanderpump sitting there with the tie on and a pleather vest. I, 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 are we going to have to sit through yeah. this all season? Uh, her her stylist or her style i talked about this when i was covering the show for after buzz is so not my i always preferred her in jeans and a tank top i just thought that it fit her better but i she loves like a ruffle a sparkly vest like a, yes, a bedazzled it, button <laughs> yeah and it's it's not the style for me but that is just that's what i've seen from her from season one and i don't i mean i think it's past change i don't think we're ever going to see a change in her style well, I am furious, if this is true, that she took up the time for multiple people <laughs> to get an updated shot in the opening titles. Well, look, look, Lisa has all this time because she didn't finish her contract out for Beverly Hills. Yeah, exactly. So she's like, she's like, hey, I got time, guys. <laughs> yeah, what else is she doing? Please. Yeah, it seemed like Jax and Britney's wedding was just totally shelved in this teaser trailer. Do you think that was intentional? Oh my god! I even forgot that happened. It, that's always been our finale with our other weddings that have been on the right. show. Right, that's well, been our big moment that we built up to. Well, they had an early June wedding, and that's when they started production. So I have a feeling it's going to be li living at the top. Yeah, who and knows? It's I. I mean, it's yeah. Who knows? And it's I'm wondering if the the wedding wasn't even that. It, because they filmed in Kentucky, so I wonder if it was harder for them to get a crew there and if they don't have as much footage to show. I, I don't really know what goes on behind those right. kind of Yeah, scenes. I mean, maybe they just show the ceremony and that's it. That's all I need. Yeah. I'm sick of watching well, weddings on TV. <laughs> I'm so sick know. of watching yeah, weddings on every, all these reality shows. Yeah, and it's hard because they all think that they have like a unique vision for their wedding, and then you look and you're like, well, it kind of looks... A, a wedding is a wedding to me sometimes. Right, right. I was going back and forth because I don't want to support Lisa Vanderpump in any way, so I wasn't going to watch it, but... um. I want to see from a producer's perspective how they integrate this younger cast and these new storylines in with the old. I want to see how they go about doing it because it's like, you know, to the point where they have to do it, like you said, and it could be clunky, you know, and how are we going to care about these new like five, six people that are just dropped upon us, you know? So we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. The Vanderpump Rules season eight, uh, that comes back when? Tuesday, January 7th at 9 p.m. on Bravo. Oh, there you go. I want to transition to Kanye West, someone who I really don't talk about. We've, I think we voted him the last two <laughs> years as like the person yeah. who needs to give it up the most. <laughs> um, more delusional than ever. Page six. There's a title here that came out this week. The title of the article, Kanye West may change name to Christian genius billionaire Kanye West. Uh, I, I can't even begin. This apparently was a joke. Uh, because he was complaining that Forbes magazine didn't name him as a billionaire, despite his shoe company, uh, the sales exceed $1 billion. Uh, Kanye, again, sit down. Yeah. Kanye is one of those, one of the artists that I wish I could separate the music from the personality because I do enjoy what he creates, but then he comes out with these tirades and I'm, I just like roll my eyes from, Oh man, like you're really distracting from the, from the art that you create by saying these weird things yeah i agree he announced that he wants to run for president and at one of these events the audience laughed at him and he said he was totally serious um i mean are we gonna have to go through this now a, a political stunt yeah well what scares me about it too is that i think americans are built to love stunts like we i mean we have a reality tv game show host in office right now and i don't know if it has to do with just the fact that People voted for Trump because they knew the name and they thought he was entertaining versus the experience that a person like that would bring to 
the White House. And I think if Kanye were to actually run or consider something, there are people who would vote for him just for the fun of it, which is so scary yes. because we're thinking about entertainment versus like we are not in a reality show. We are thinking about politics. And I don't think people remember that. Exactly. Like to my point, like celebrity culture, pop culture is now complete mixed in the same pot with politics. So mm-hmm. it's like uh, for me to find topics to talk about on this show that aren't political is almost impossible at this point because everyone's so close. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. But similar to our president, uh, Kanye, apparently, um, he kind of went on a rant for 40 minutes, quote, being all over the place, talking about the success of Yeezy. And uh, he talked with the shoe designer uh, in front of a huge audience, to, uh, encouraging people to own their power, specifically African American people. The power is your power is not just to vote Democrat. And I mean, I don't know what it, what what, uh, what is going on with him between this and then the Sunday service is on the other side of the spectrum. I, I can't keep track of this man. I, he, he's he's unstable, in my opinion. He's completely unstable. I agree. I wish that I could act surprised, but to say that he ranted for 45 minutes, I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. That tracks. That's, well, I mean, that's the history it. that we have. Yeah. We, yeah. We've seen this multiple <laughs> times. So it's just, I don't know the people who are surprised by this or, I mean, I, I know this is news because this is where we are now, but it's just like, yeah, no, he's, he's a man who has an inflated ego and we let him do these things and everybody is, it, it, he gets rewarded by the attention. So he keeps thinking it's a good thing to do. And that same sentiment could go towards Trump, in my opinion. And you know, I hate to talk politics because it's all about being positive and we're trying to you know, have an escape. But um, the, the worlds are just too close. And th- these two figures are just too similar, in my opinion. Right. And I, I think there there is some aspects of his message. Like, I do love that he's telling people of color, like, you know, claim you don't have to do this just because you're told to. But also it's, you know, there's I, I, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to ride that line of with, when it comes to politics. I, I don't know what to do with Kanye. <laughs> Same. I, I think he's going to have a third title of Hang It Up this year. Uh, it could be. It could be. We might have to have that same question proposed Raining this champion. year at the Christmas yeah. party. Get ready. The holiday special. That's um, right. Well, um, in a moment, we're going to talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Granny June, my grandmother, who has not been on the show in a minute, is calling in, and she's going to share her thoughts on the premiere episode. And then from there, we're going to talk a little bit about fall TV, specifically this Constance Wu. She got her wish. That and more with Jay Ellis in a moment. Now this. You're listening to Grant's Rants. Subscribe and spread the word. There are a lot more rants to come. Listen anytime on all major podcasting platforms. And now, back to the show. Real Housewives of New Jersey, the show returned for its 10th season this week. The full season nine cast returned. There really weren't any changes that we saw. Apparently, um, original housewife Caroline Manzo was approached and then later insulted when they asked her to be just a friend of and not a full time, just kind of test the waters. Um, You don't do that with originals. You know what you're getting with Caroline Manzo. That was some BS. I'm glad she walked. But we're we're stuck with the same originals. I still can't remember one of them. I think her name is Jackie. (laughs) And um, (laughs) I don't mind it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Let's take a listen to what Granny June had to say. Joining me on the line through Skype is Granny June. Hello, Granny. Oh, hi there. How's everybody? Glad to be back. Well, I've been trying to find a place for you in the craziness to come back on the show for a long time. We always have our New Year's show every year. The first episode of the year is our one-on-one special. But, you know, I don't, yes. want, I don't want people to have to wait till January to hear from you. So I figured, why oh, not talk okay. about New Jersey? That's good, yeah. So. Yeah, well, I looked at the first episode of New Jersey. It's the same old thing, you know, who's fighting with who, who's blaming who for what. And, of course, it's a place uh, when uh, Teresa was waiting for her husband, he was being transferred to ICE, and she was wondering if he was going to stay in ICE or just wouldn't be able to stand it and leave for Italy. And, right. of course, we know that he didn't stay in ICE. It was too, too traumatic for him. So I take so, it you watched um, you watched that one-on-one special, Teresa and Joe Unlocked. Did you watch yes, that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I did. 
That was and, interesting, but I mean, you know, like there were a few things in there. I talked about it previously. There were a few things that jumped out to me, but I feel it kind of spoiled the season a little bit because now we're seeing like five months, six months ago, you know? Exactly. But this this episode, um, they all got together. They were invited to um, Jennifer's husband's fifth anniversary of his plastic surgery business. And I think she Who is cares? Gonna, I know. He is weird. He's weird looking. And he's he's a big he seems to be happy being a big part of the show this year. That's you because know? he wants to use this as a commercial for his business. You yes. know? It's like, you know, there was a little bit of it last year. We knew we but we mainly saw the house with all the plastic furniture from China. But now I have a feeling the way she's talking about all the perks she gets, it's almost like subliminal advertising for all that he has to offer you know yes she throws this big party for him she says you know my husband makes the money and i plan the parties and um mm. she's really this, this very progressive this, very progressive this, jennifer in 2019 oh to me the two of them were so obnoxious it was disgusting to me i agree of course, of course that jackie is still having a fight with her um, because, you know, she got mad with Jackie for printing that article about housewives and she took it personally, housewives that spoil their children. You know, and- I, I've said this in the past about some of these housewives. I think when you start a new season, you've got to kind of wipe the slate clean and reset a little bit because yes. th- we're I mean, carrying happened- the same story in. Oh, I mean, that happened how long ago? That's ridiculous. And it was That's- minor. I mean, we've seen much larger things happen on this show that people can't forget than, you know, sublimity or or indirectly writing about someone's family in an article in the first three sentences of a piece. I mean, who cares? It's, it's, it's so, it's so petty. How about Dolores? She lives with her ex-husband and, uh, also her new boyfriend. What do you make of the fact that they're all living together? Or at least we're led to believe. I don't know if I personally believe it because I think the situation is so absurd. But we're supposed to believe that all these people live in that one house. And I mean, it's not a very big, it's a, it's a big house, I guess, on some standards, but I don't know if it's enough to house all these separate people living in separate rooms. Well, all I can say is they must be very, very understanding people and compassionate to be able to all of them get along, the husband and her boyfriend, they, they gave each other, you know, a hug when he left and she kisses the boyfriend in front of him and then she kisses the boyfriend, you know, I mean, it's, it's. It's hard to believe, but maybe it happens. Well, the ex-husband should know better. The ex-husband should bow out. Now that Dolores' boyfriend moved in, why is he still there? He looks like a bum. He looks like a loser. Go get your own apartment. Get out. I mean, you're not part of that relationship. I don't understand what purpose he has of being there now that she has another man there. I don't either, but it seems as though maybe he pays the bills. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. And that's why he's there. I mean, the other one's a doctor. I mean, come on. Yeah, that that's another scenario. I mean, there's something comforting about New Jersey. It's not the best city to watch, but there's something comforting about it. Maybe it's because, you know, I grew up where you are in Rhode Island. I mean, you know, this is probably the closest housewives yeah. to what I can relate to in, as far as yeah, climate goes and family and being yeah, Italian. There's, there's that- yeah, there's that Italian strain in it, you know, yeah. the families that get together and they have the meals together and stuff like that. And you do have a little bit of, you do get a little bit of feeling, you know, that you belong a little bit with that, with that scene, you know. Yeah. But we never acted like that. Never. I want to talk about Margaret because I, I feel like a comfort with Margaret when she's on the show. I feel like I like, you know, I, of course, I've, I've got to meet her a couple of times, but I just feel like she's very familiar to me on the show. I, I can relate to her in certain ways. I feel like she's an open book. And I just was like really happy to catch up with her. There was just something like friendly, like, oh, it was nice to see her. You know, it almost felt like I was seeing a friend. Yeah, Margaret is OK. She has a terrific, terrific accent. <laughs> I noticed this time. She, I mean, she really has a New Jersey twang. Really, uh, she's okay. Mm. What do you? Uh, what, what, what would you say to people who think you have a very strong accent? 
<laughs> yeah, I well, I do, but I, I don't hear it on myself, you know? Right, right. When I used to do phone work, people would be shocked at my... They'd want to hear my accent, and they, they always thought I came from New York. Well, at least we were, we, were, we were spared Marge Sr. I know you don't enjoy Marge Sr., so we didn't get to see too much of her. I saw her on uh, Andy Cohen. Um, she was on when, when uh, Margaret was on. She was the bartender, and um, she looks pretty damn good. for. Uh, I don't know how old she is, but she had all kinds of, of plastic oh, yeah. surgery. And uh, she really made a very kind of off-color statement. Well, I didn't see it myself, so what did she say? She said, I may have two cats, but I only have one. <laughs> Oh God! Is that was that her tagline? Yeah, the only thing with Margaret is I don't know where the hell she gets those outfits that she wears. That outfit, that green top hanging way down, was horrible on her. I don't know where she gets her outfits or who tells her what to wear, but she doesn't yeah. look that great. You know, I'm not one to notice makeup, jewelry, and clothes that much, but that did that look did stand out to me too. Yeah, it I, wasn't I, very good. No. It wasn't very good. No, I was too busy admiring her staircase. I like her house a lot, but I, that outfit really, though, was an eyesore, yeah. in my opinion. Here's the thing yeah. about New Jersey with me. At the end of the day, I am going to watch. I, I enjoy the show. I just need, and I need this to happen with a lot of the housewives, they just need to be shorter seasons. Um, you know, 18 episodes with the reunions is enough. I hope that it's not too much because there's just not enough going on. Like, I, you know, I feel like we had a nice catch up. We kind of see where everybody is. Um, not that much has changed uh, with the exception of Joe and Teresa. But I mean, all the women just, see, all the women seem to kind of be in the same place. So now that we have that established, you know, I, what, what else do we have in store here? You know what I mean? I have to see what's left and hopefully it's not going to be dragging all on and on and on for weeks on end. You know, I just want to see a good, strong, tight season. Yeah, I have a feeling that that Jennifer is going to have a big part in the next season. I think she's going to be kind of one of the outstanding ones. And to me, I I got a kick out of her in the past seasons because she seemed so ridiculously stupid with the things that she said. And and she still seems to be that way, but yeah. I think she's going to have a bigger part. And, and b- because she's going to have a bigger part, hope maybe she's going to really show how stupid she is because she's going to be saying more things and and she she she's really very childish in her own way let's give this episode a letter grade uh, I'm going to give it an A minus B plus because for New Jersey standards, it was pretty good in my opinion. I wasn't bored. Uh, it moved for me. I was okay with it. There was just enough ridiculous. Um, I was okay with the whole thing. Yeah, I was too. I'd say I'd say I'd give it a B. Well, I want to get your take on that, but I think it's important to mention that um, I've recruited you as a, the, one of the newest viewers of 90 Day Fiance, and we're going to have to have a whole conversation about that at a later date. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I'm recording it tonight. <clears throat> I'm dying to look at it. It's very, it's, it's very interesting. This is a new set that started last Sunday, so I'm really into it. And I also love the pillow talk. I really get a kick out of it. Well, we'll have so to have I'm you on. That. Yeah, we'll have to have you on to talk about 90 Day Fiance coming up, of course. We'll likely get to that with our New Year's special because, I mean, it's insane, but this year is already wrapping up. But thanks, Granny, for the your two cents and plus that on Real Housewives of New Jersey season premiere. Uh, oh, thanks, no. Yeah, thanks My for calling pleasure. in. My pleasure. Yeah. All right. I hope everyone enjoyed our little talk. And uh, if I don't talk to you before the holidays, I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. All right. So, Jay, what do you make of this? Uh, I know you kind of know of housewives in the periphery, just through just the Bravo universe. They are in the zeitgeist. I know about them, but I don't actively watch. But I'm happy to have a conversation. What are your thoughts of this season if, for what you've seen? You were talking about 
Caroline Manzo being friend of, is that, I mean, I know it's kind of a slap to the face of people who have been on the show before, but isn't that kind of a sweet spot? Cause you can kind of drop in when you feel like it and not be involved if you don't want to be. Yeah. But I think with someone like Caroline, she's all in or she's all out, you know? Got it. Uh, yeah. Okay. She's one of those that she's a big personality. She wouldn't want to just, you know, play part-time, you know, get ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And what I notice about Jersey specifically is there's so much more because obviously we have the tie with the Melissa and uh, Teresa as a family and they just seem so much more um, intertwined. Like their stories are really real as opposed to I, I feel like you're dropping in with a group of friends when you're watching New York or Beverly Hills, um, Potomac even like they they are friends. But New Jersey, it feels like it really rides that line between what's appropriate and what's considered. I mean, this is people's lives and families that are at stake. And um, if they're fighting, then, you know, they're something could have a lasting uh, impression on, right. on families' lives. Yeah. The one constant of New Jersey is that family dynamic for sure. Yeah. And do you like that? Do you enjoy watching that or do you prefer a more friendship vibe? I like it for this show because it's unique to this show. Um, you know, I, I view a show like Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's all about friendships. It's very fake. So it's nice to watch New Jersey where it's like they really, you know, are not that fake in the sense that they are related and they are, you know, going to Christmas dinner together or they, you know, have known each other since, you know, they were like teenagers. You know, stuff like that is a lot more real. You can't fake that. Yeah. I'm going to make a transition to Constance Wu. <laughs> um, this is someone who I really don't enjoy too much, to be honest with you. Uh, she... Uh, was on the, she's on that show Fresh Off the Boat. It got canceled. They're going to finish out six seasons. She responded on Twitter uh, earlier when the show was picked up for its sixth season. Um, she used the F word. She said, so upset right now that I'm literally crying. Later apologized for this. Actors everywhere were probably rolling their eyes. Um, you know, here she is on a network <laughs> sitcom, furious that it got picked up. Oh man, I, I'm the opposite. I'm obsessed with Constance Wu now. I think this was such a renegade move because I love an actress that behaves badly. It's just kind of, okay, it like fuels I respect my fire. That. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah, you that. know, it's just this, it's just this person who's putting it out there. And I think it's like a golden parachute where, or it, I don't know, is, is that the right term where you are locked into this contract on network television, which would, I thought Fresh Off the Boat was one of their highest rated shows. And for it to be canceled or for her to be on the show for its run, after Crazy Rich Asians, I imagine that she was getting lots of offers because they saw her as bankable. So her management and agents are probably pushing her out to roles. But when you have a network TV show that's in first position, if they say, no, we're not letting you do that, you are locked in. They they own you until they don't. Mm -hmm. So I bet she probably lost out on a part that was maybe a little bit more um, fulfilling for her as an artist. After six years or six seasons of playing the same character, you probably want to branch out a little bit. Um and I think she wants to show the world that she's more than just a sitcom actress, TV wife. And she proved that in movies. I mean, granted crazy rich Asian, she wasn't my standout, right. but you know, she, she proves that herself that she's bankable. And I think that an actress or, or an actors need to know their worth. And she probably wants to, to be out of that contract. And I think she's getting her wish, which I was living for everybody saying like the memes of her at home right now, when she reads it, it's not <laughs> cute and it's people jumping up for joy. That's constant Wu. Yeah. 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 She got a wish. That's what yeah. page six said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed her in hustlers that to me was, you know, if I had to point out, you know, a really strong performance of hers that I enjoyed. Uh, she did nothing for me in Crazy Rich Asians. Um, I've never really watched Fresh Off the Boat, uh, just bits and pieces. And, and to me, I, you know, it was, I, I forgot she even played the mother. So, you know, it's just her performances weren't there for me, but the Hustlers, I, I thoroughly enjoyed. So, mm -hmm. you and know. I think this tackles a, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's all. Oh, I was going to say, I think this tackles a bigger issue where we, I think as a society, we let sitcoms and shows go on for too long, where I think we should really have, once we start running them dry, we should kind of hang up the hat and yes. and think of a new idea. These poor actors get locked into contracts. I know it's this really sweet deal, but for Big Bang Theory, Friends, like all these- Modern ones, Family. I mean, modern Family. You can find the the point of where it's like, oh boy, we're now we're just here for- 
the residuals and the checks 100%. versus it's the obvious. creativity. Right. Yeah. And so. a lot of the great creative minds that made like a show like Modern Family so smart in the beginning and pushed the boundaries, they're long gone. I mean, they're on other projects. They're, you know, at streaming services. Like, so it's like, it's not the same show after a while. It's not as quick or as smart or you know, as relevant to me, one could even say the same for the last season of The Office, which is, you know, still a pretty good season overall, but not as, you know, as brilliant as the show was in its heyday. I agree. I think there is a shelf life. Uh, yeah, I think there is. And but I think that the the cancellation of Fresh Off the Boat specifically, I mean, we have Randall Park as the lead as well. And he keeps busy. He's got he was doing Veep. He did Always Be My Maybe. So he has a career outside of the show, too. So I think it might be a good move for the actors involved in the show, just because we'll get to have more representation outside of just the show about immigration. True. True. Yes. That's important. Now they're bankable. Now they are considered like a bankable thing that, that studios will hopefully put their money behind. So fresh off the boat joins a list of five other shows that have recently been canceled. This is according to TV by the numbers, Beverly Hills or BH 90210 on Fox also got killed. Uh, Grand hotel on ABC is done. The In Between on NBC. I don't even know what that is. Um, Sunny Side on NBC. No surprise there. That got canceled. So, um, you know, it's rare these days to see a cancellation because usually they let these things ride out. Uh, and there's just so much TV. I should have clarified these are just from broadcast. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's time. Six seasons. I mean, it's not like, you know, it got caught off. Like, Sunnyside, I think that had – this was its first year. So Yeah, it was a freshman show, right. and it had four episodes before it was uh, canceled, moved to the streaming platform. But now it is picked up by Hulu. Oh, it is. So it has a second life. And I think um, because Will & Grace was taking its time slot – and Hulu picked it up because they liked that it was – it had a diverse cast and it was kind of showing something different. So I believe that Hulu is ordering it for the the remainder of the season. And I don't know if it got picked up for a second, but that is uh, maybe something – good for the show i don't i mean yeah in this world of streaming it is so impossible to maintain where where's what's what how you get this you know what night is this how are how all the episodes released at once i mean i know it's it's so hard to maintain it just there's just so much tv right now apple tv like i can't even get to that mentally like it's just too much so and it's peak tv where it's i won't even hear about something until somebody recommends it to me because i'm just not seeing they might have the date when something's premiering and it's just so over my head because I'm like, yeah, but I have five other shows that I'm supposed to be watching right now. I can't even think about taking on another one. Right. And like living here in LA, there's so many billboards. Like that's kind of how I know like what's coming out on Netflix and you know, Amazon, whatever. But if I didn't live here or I didn't live in New York, I mean, I don't know how other people know what's even coming on because I mean, how do you know? There's just too much. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon have been on my morning commute every day, so <laughs> I can thank them for the morning oh, show. I, right. I know when that one's happening. Right, right. Oh, yeah, that's everywhere. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's a little TV and Hollywood talk. I like the topics of this episode a lot because it's a little more well-rounded as far as, you know, the a little business talk in there, and a little Real Housewives, Granny June. But I want to talk with Jay because I saw on the Instagram, I saw you, you were walking for Andrew Christian. So tell me about that and give us give the listener a little insight of what who that is and what they create. Sure. So Andrew Christian is a, um, I guess, underwear designer that mostly caters to – Maybe gay men, I, but I think that there's probably a straight audience in there as well. And I received um, an invitation to audition where the audition itself was wild because I was in Hollywood on a rooftop patio where they had laid out very specific markers for how the stage was going to be laid out. And um, when you go to the auditions like this, it is a cattle call where they'll call up uh, 10 women and 10 men at the same time. And you strip down to your underwear. So you always wear underwear to an audition. Um, <laughs> and you hand them your, your headshot. They take a Polaroid just so they can see what you look like on the day of. And then they give you the walk and you guys line up as if you're in a real show. And if you don't listen to instructions, like some people do, you don't hit the marks that they want you to hit. They, you don't hit the pose that you want you to hit. So you always make sure you listen. And um, I actually really hit it off with the casting director and they asked me to stay for another walk. And so right there, I was like, oh, well, this is a good sign because they won't waste their time unless they're considering casting you. Uh, so I got the call, uh, I believe, the next week. And it was really fun. I got to meet the creative director of Andrew Christian, who was a really sweet guy. 
and a few of the guys who are featured on their Instagram and their, I guess, like uh, considered like their video content, they were opening the show and closing the show. So uh, myself with, I think, eight other guys uh, did a full Andrew Christian underwear runway show. And it was my first real runway ever in my life. And it's an experience I'll never forget. It was really, really fun. We had yeah. Laverne Cox there, too. She was the MC for the night. And um, a really sweet person. Oh, that's great. I saw the videos. Where was that uh, held? So we were doing a charity a charity thing through um, APAIT is the uh, thing. It's a lot of AIDS research and HIV prevention. Right. They're, they're doing a lot of um, strides to make it a healthier and happier, safe uh, sex life environment, everything like that. And so this was all for proceeds were going towards there. And um, to honor Laverne Cox for her work in the field as well. So it was a combination of kind of like a mixer gala with um, charity as well. Ooh, fancy and fabulous. <laughs> I mean, this... It was fancy and fabulous. Yes, exactly. that's great. So you are you going to try to pursue more work like that? or just... I've been bitten. So when, when things happen like that, yeah, I mean, I've done print modeling and print jobs every once in a while. But to do the runway, it was really fun. I'm considered on the shorter end for print. So I'm 5'10". And I think the average is normally like six feet, six one, because usually they want the men to be taller than the women. But uh, they made the exception, I guess, for me, which is really sweet. And I want to do more. So I'm hoping I'm in their good graces and I get a call for another show again. And um, yeah, that would be something I would I'd love to <laughs> strap on my bare, we were in bare feet. So I'd, I'd love to strap on my feet again and just <laughs> walk the runway again. It was it was a really good experience. It was definitely something new and helps me well-rounded as a performer. 100%. That's great. That's great. And uh, well, talk to me a little bit about the writing that you've been doing. We, we, went, we've, we went away to, to Big Bear, right? Uh, uh, two months ago, it seems. And um, that was a great time to get away. And I remember we were talking about different projects. So talk to me about what you're working on. I love, I mean, just hanging out with you when we were with our other friend, Jesse, who some people might know from After Buzz as well. Um, it's so fun to hang out with you guys and just hear about projects because I feel like we have that fire and that drive to keep going because yeah. this industry is is wild. You you have to have such a strong gumption to just stay in it. And it was so fun to hear you guys talk about your projects. And then what I was working on is um, I was moved on to the next round for an ABC diversity uh, program where I actually auditioned on the acting side of it and got a callback for that, which... Um, if some people don't know, it's almost like a second interview mm -hmm. where you have to perform for uh, producers. And that was for the ABC talent where That's they. Great. Hopefully, yeah. So that was a big step for me that I was really proud of myself for doing that. And I wrote for NBC. Um, they asked for you to write a spec script and an original uh, pilot, which pilot is the first episode of a show. And my original got moved on to the next step, which I, I heard back that they weren't moving forward with mine, but it gave me such a kick in the butt to be like, look, you got past the first one. That's major for your yeah, first time. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can't even pretend like I'm not proud of myself. It's just, it was a huge step yeah. and um, I, I, it just really reignited my fire for writing. And I have lots of ideas swirling around in my head and a lot of outlines saved on my computer. So now it's just putting pen to paper or I guess fingers to keyboard and uh, smashing out the rest of the scripts. And hopefully I'll have something written by the next time that we have, a deadline due for the NBC and ABC uh, diversity programs. And hopefully I move forward further and further each time I submit. Well, you're a great example of what it takes to like be out here and to hustle. You know, we just talked about br even briefly, but just the multiple things that you've been doing and the uh, multiple approaches you have to make to be able to, you know, keep going out here in this business and, um, yeah. you know, you're doing the work and that's great. And I'm so glad to hear, I didn't, I didn't even know about the, the ABC, um, project, the diversity, uh, whole thing. So that's great to hear that. Congratulations on that too. Thank you. It's those things I keep close to my vest because I learned to keep it quiet until something is solidified. And I mean, those were big steps that I was proud of myself. So now I'm kind of sharing more, but it's those you know, you go out on so many auditions and you don't get so many of them. So you just learn to stop talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's the like ones me with that jobs. Did. That's like yeah. me with jobs. I mean, I used to get so excited, you know, recruiters would say so many great things. And I, I now I've heard it all like probably with you in auditions, you've heard everything six, seven, eight times. What does it all really translate to? You know? 
Oh, absolutely. And with, with you, it's, I see the drive as well. And it's like, I, it takes people like, it's always encouraging to see people like you who are still in here and we're the ones fighting and we're going to outlast it. I think it's, it's a good sign. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I keep saying my mantra this year, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what you need. It's we're not going anywhere. So yep. you may as well just give it to I, me. I, exactly. Exactly. That's 100% what I keep saying. You get yeah. it. Well, yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Well, this it's is the drive. Great. This has been great. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the whole podcast and joining me on the rants. Of course, anytime. And I want to mention uh, there was an extended conversation I had with Granny June that's going to be up this week over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Grants Rants. Speaking of Patreon, I want to say a special thanks to Michelle Gold, who is a Patreon subscriber and supporter of the podcast. God bless you. Thank you for supporting the Rants. We know each other. Uh, I've gone out for drinks with her. She's been wonderful. Uh, Thank you, Michelle. And my thanks to Jay for joining me on the podcast. Of course, I always look forward to listening and now i'm happy to be a part of it oh thank you as uh, the rants will continue we'll be back this has been grants rants support the rants on patreon at patreon.com slash grants rants follow grants on twitter and instagram at it's grants rants cover art created by howie rone voiceover by oh yeah original theme music by alexander Arntzen. the grant michael collection We'll be right back.